for the first time. Okay, uh, I was traveling with Doug and another mate of ours, Rowan, who he couldn't be here. Uh, he couldn't make it over to America, but uh, we were backpacking around Europe. We were in Glasgow to meet up with some friends of ours who lived in Australia and they're from Glasgow. Um, and we were staying at a backpacker's place and Megan was studying abroad in London and her and Carmen and another girl, Brianna, traveled up to Glasgow for the weekend and stayed in the same hostel. And good old Doug likes to take advantage of his free breakfast. And if he didn't get up that morning, we probably wouldn't have met the girls. So Doug was showing off his American geography with the girls and they were politely listening. <laughs> and, uh, and then they, well, I guess we, we went out that night and we got talking and met up a few times throughout Europe. And that's, yeah, we kept Skyping since. So. Okay. Snowballed from there. Snowballed, <laughs> snowballed from there. Okay, um, so we met in Glasgow, Scotland. Matt was backpacking and I was studying abroad in London and we went to Glasgow for the weekend. And we were staying in the same hostel. And me and two of my girlfriends were in the kitchen discussing American geography with a very nice Australian fellow when his friend burst in because he had to use the bathroom. And um, that was Matt. And he was dancing around like a two year old because he had to pee. And um, the first words he said to me were like, oh, oh, hey. And then so it was like, Doug, I need the key because he had to pee. So that was, that was Matt. <laughs> what was your first impression of Megan after, you, after the first time meeting her? Oh, I thought she was way out of my league. <laughs> I was, she really is. She was, was, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say I felt the same thing. No, she knows that. I've told her that. I uh, said this is just a big candid camera. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I just, no, yeah. Um, I know. I guess, yeah, I just couldn't believe that she was talking to me. I, I do the nervous thing of drinking too much when I get really nervous. And uh, yeah, I made a fair <laughs> few fools of myself. It was a bit awkward. She knew what she was in for. She she knew what she was in for. She was like, "This guy's awkward. He's a ginger. That's that's all good." You know? <laughs> that's I didn't. I could have done so many. Well, actually, I don't think I could have done more wrong than what I already did, but it still worked. So I wowed her, swept her off her feet. That's what I, did. <laughs> I, about I really liked his red hair, and he was wearing black skinny jeans, which is not necessarily common for uh, American boys to wear. So I remember thinking like, ooh, he's got red hair, and I like his little pants. <laughs> and so that was, that was my, uh, my Matt impression. <laughs> yeah, by talking about feces. When did you first realize that she was the one for you? Oh, gosh. Oh, one day we were Skyping and we actually told each other we, that we love each other. Um, this is going to sound really silly, but I actually don't remember the date of that. <laughs> well, you're not supposed to say that. We're going to let me stop the tape. <laughs> Make up a date. Uh, it was in... We'll cut that part out. It was before she came to Australia, so before March 2011. So, it so how, how, around February. How, how far so, into your relationship was? Oh, it was only about three months or so. Yeah, but uh, well, I mean, we had talked about when she came across to Paris just before the end of the, my trip in Europe, and we had talked about continuing it and seeing where it went. And mm -hmm. uh, when I came home and we skyped a few more times, yeah, I think that it really kind of hit home to me there. So. Okay. And when, when did you first meet? What, what year was it? 2010, November 26. So just over two years. November 26, 2010. <laughs> um, I don't have an exact moment, but when Matt and I were seeing each other in Europe, because he's only there for such a short amount of time, it's kind of sporadic. But after I went to Paris, I realized I wanted to continue things, even though it was going to be long distance. And I guess I figured if I was willing to do long distance with him from Australia, when I was never willing to do long distance with anybody over a shorter distance, that it must be pretty serious. <laughs> and there's one last question for you. Tell us how you proposed to her. All right. Uh, when she first came to Australia in March 2011, I took her to North Head, which is just above Manly. It overlooks the heads at Sydney, and you get a view of the city. Uh, so I proposed to her up there. I took her back there because uh, it was the first place she stayed in, or went to in Sydney. Uh, so I took her up there and proposed to her up there. So it's a view that overlooks the city in Sydney. And, yeah, proposed okay. to her. I, was, I didn't want to. She said, not in public. So uh, we're standing there looking at the view and we're standing there for ages and ages because people just kept coming and looking at the view and I was waiting for it to be completely empty to propose to her because she just didn't want it in public and was finally, so. uh, it was probably about 10 minutes or so, it was pretty pretty long wait. It was, yeah. Felt like a long time. Yeah, it was, it was perfect, you know, I was, I was nervous and sweaty and awkward as I always am. So, yeah. Did you go down on one knee or did you just... Yeah. I did go down on one knee, yeah, yeah, I went Classic. down on one knee, yeah. Classic. And I'm uh, a traditional guy, I asked both Megan's parents her mum and her dad, I Skyped with them both to ask for hand in marriage. So, yeah. And how did he propose? We went to 
Um, there's a there's an area of Sydney called Manly, which has, um, it's uh, got uh, like a natural rock head that looks out over the Pacific Ocean and the Sydney Harbor, and you can see the skyline. And when I first went to visit him, he took me there just to see the, the view of the city. And so he told me we we're going to a breakfast, a birthday breakfast for his mother. And as we were driving there, I said, oh, this is nice. I've never been to Manly. And because I forgot. And he was like, yes, you have. And we were having like a small argument about it. And I was like, if you can just tell me when I was here. But he couldn't remember. And so he's like, I'm just going to drive around until you remember. And as we pulled up to the, the gates to get into the park at, on Manly Head, I realized. And I was just like, oh. So I just, I kind of just stopped talking. And it was quite funny because where he wanted to do it was where we had looked out. But there were a lot of tourists and their families there, so he was just flustered driving around the whole park trying to find an area that still looked out over the city that didn't have a bunch of tourists with their cameras. Um, yeah, so he did it. He did it there. And then he had a picnic ready, and we went and sat down by the water. He had a whole little picnic in the back of the car.